All right, so all my silly opinions aside, let's uh, let's check out. Oh, look at the he has a gun in Nepal. Like an assault rifle in Nepal. I'm Joy, I'm Changunar and Bossu. I'm going to like my ticket. I'm going Sunday, September 18th. It's my last day here in Changu. I go to Kathmandu tomorrow. So I'm gonna go up to the village and show you guys the little village I've been hanging out. Uh, basically I walk up this hill every single day for a couple of different reasons. One being it's good fitness because this hill is steep. I don't know if you can tell by the trees but I'm going at like a 30 degree angle and my breath <clears throat> first and second reason is that in the village they sell a lot of tourist stuff because Changunarian is the oldest temple in Nepal it's from the 4th century I believe or 3rd century whatever, 400 and something AD. So every time they see a tourist uh, or a foreigner, white person, I guess it doesn't matter if they're white or not, but they try to like sell you everything. And so by going up into the village every single day, they start to remember who I am. And then I become friends with a couple of them. So today, we're gonna go and say hi to him. Namaste, how are you? Fine. Good. Uh, that guy owns the shop that I buy fruit at. So, yeah, we're gonna go meet everybody. First, we're gonna go to the temple and learn how to, or how they worship, Bishnu, Krishna, Shiva. Namaste. Namaste. Say hi. <laughs> I love the little kids here so much. I love everybody here, but the little kids especially. We're gonna stop by the paint place. Oh, and he's gonna take me up there. There's the man. Namaste. Namaste. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Good. So plans kind of fell through as they often tend to do when traveling and well in life really. Uh, 
they're pretty secretive about it. Um, I guess the story goes, there was a farmer who was grazing his, his, uh, his cow up on the top of this hill. He had stopped by a tree and some boy came out from behind the tree and stole all the milk out of the cow. Well, he thought that the tree was haunted by some evil spirit and he cut the tree down. Well, when he cut the tree down, blood came out of the tree uh, and it ended up being that the tree was Lord Beastnu. And because, oh, hey, Joey's coming, you can come on. I'm just telling the story about how the, uh, um, how this temple, like the cow and the beast and all that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. So that is why, uh, maybe you know the story that, uh, his, uh, head was beheaded. Yeah, yeah. So that's why inside the temple also, the god, mm -hmm. he can, we can remove his head. Oh, his head's yeah. in the temple? Yeah, yeah, even in the temple. Inside. I didn't know that. Yeah, that is. Huh. Yeah, I was told that no one could tell you what was in the temple. Yeah, you can, you cannot see, but you can, we can tell. You. Oh same yeah, type yeah, of, yeah, Same type of statue, uh, just front of the temple, maybe have seen the same, same yeah, type yeah. of tem statue, but that is made of uh, stone, and mm. inside it's the same type of statue, yeah, but yeah. it's made of gold. Yeah, there's gold in there. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> So this thing is a chariot that they use in, in, uh, in ceremonies. These elephants, there's four of them, they hold up this, this, which is the universe. And when the elephants get tired and they stretch their legs, it creates an earthquake. So that's what happened in Nepal in 2015. The elephants were straightening their legs. Bet you didn't know that. Bet you thought it had to do with like seismic activity or tectonic plate shifting. Those elephants. I've been trying to get pictures of things the whole time I've been here and it's just rained every single day. And if it's not raining, it's super cloudy and just not real conducive for good photo opportunities. So instead you're gonna have to just deal with this low light crappy video of this amazing temple. This pillar right here, for example, is used to be over here, but then because of the earthquake in 1930-ish, four? 34? 1934? I don't know. Earthquake. Again. The, uh, the elephants had to stretch their legs in 1934 as well. And this big pillar fell. Hi, Pooch. Hi. You're cute. You're covered in bugs. I don't want to touch you, but you're cute. I don't have any food for you. Nope. There's all kinds of cute dogs here. They're all covered in bugs and they're gross. So I don't touch them. But they're super cute and friendly. Uh, anyway. I don't know what they're saying. Oh, yeah. So this pillar. It uh, has inscribed in it in a language that's actually older than Sanskrit. Joey had told me, but I don't remember what he said it was. Uh, but it basically says that when your husband dies, you have to burn yourself in a fire. If you're a woman, that's basically what this says. And it says it in 108 lines. And if you can see, there's not 108 lines showing. So the rest of them are like down in the ground. Well, there was a king whose father died. Um, I think he said in like the 14th century or 15th century. Um, well, he was a prince at the time and then his father died and he didn't want his mom to have to burn herself. So he was like, Shh. and that's what that pillar says basically that that's the rule but we're not going to do that anymore because I don't want my mom to die.
this says no shoes or belts of leather inside management. Now supposedly there's gold inside this temple, like a bunch of gold. Uh, there's a head of Beast New in there as well. And so they have these gnarly locks on this door, uh, which poses the question, in such a poor country, why do they have gold locked up? Because it's for Bisnu? And if you take the gold, Bisnu will be angry. Meanwhile, elephants stretch their legs and create earthquakes. Religions are fascinating. Uh, there's so, especially Hinduism, they have 33 million gods and only 22 million people practice Hinduism. Hinduism has so many different ways to worship different gods and whatnot. Like they worship cows and they worship dogs and they worship people and they worship the earth and everything is God to them. And I know it's really cool and I, and I understand it and I get it. I get why they do it, but at the same time, it's like they're sacrificing their well-being, but that's also because this isn't the real life. The next life is the real life. So I try not to get too uh, upset or involved. Sometimes it just seems really silly and I just don't understand it. You know, like for example, this country is wicked poor and people are living in poverty. Middle class people, middle class are basically living in poverty. Yet there's this temple right here guarded by police officers and military that has a shitload of gold in it. I don't think I even need to finish that.